Is it true that I think a lot of people believe now that there's a sort of certain, a default weight size based on our genetics that we have that we'll keep returning to? We kind of touched on it a little bit earlier on, um, regardless of what diet, diet we do. So I'm thinking of some, you know, families often look quite similar yes. in terms of body shape and size, et cetera. Um, I'm wondering how much like control they have against fighting against those genes to, to get a you know, six pack abs, not saying that's a sustainable or healthy place to get to, but is it significantly harder for certain people if their family is maybe a little bit more larger to get to, to fight against that and get to a different state and then stay in that state? Yes. Okay. Undoubtedly so. So there, there is certainly what we call, it, it used to be called a set point hypothesis, meaning that each of us has a weight we actually protect. It's probably more nuanced than that. It's a set range. There's a range that you can actually range that we find easy to keep to the weight. So in other words, I'm not thinking about my body weight at the moment, and this is the weight that I am, but I wish I was half a stone or a stone lighter. But if I lost that half a stone, I would then have to think about food all the time to keep that half a stone off. Whereas I get half a stone more and I don't raise my weight anymore. So that's the idea where there's a, there, there is a, a, a weight range is easy to protect. And each of us is different. There are some people who are skinny. There are some people who just find it more difficult to say no to food than others. That's pretty much it. So some people's thermostat in food is set a little higher than others. And you defend that thermostat, 25 degrees versus 20 degrees. And there's really next to nothing you can do. You can shift from 25 to 24 and a half, and maybe after Christmas, you're 25 and 0.5, okay? And so you shift around there. But the likelihood of you getting down to 20 and staying there, you can get down to 20, okay? If you do some stupid diet, but the moment you ping, you ping back, you ping right back up again. So we do defend, um, there is ve very, very little choice in inverted commas in where we end up with the body weight over a lifetime. At any given meal, we have a choice, you think, right? Pizza or no pizza, pizza or no pizza. But over thousands of feeding events, there's very little choice. What, what then, you reference age there. Do we get fatter with age? Because generally I look at, you know, I'd say younger people typically have a slightly leaner physique and then something seems to happen along the way. Is that just a false observation I have, or is there some science that supports the, the gaining of weight as we age? There's science. The, a, weight is inexorably up, okay? Uh, even though we've stopped growing when we're, when we're 18 years old. Actually, there's some latest science. I used to, I used to, if you had asked me the question five years ago, I would have said that by the time we hit 40 or 50, our metabolism starts to dip. And that's part of the reason. That's not true. As it turns out, our metabolism doesn't start to dip till we're 60. Okay, but what happens as we get older are a number of different things. First of all, we tend to get richer. We tend to get more money. We tend to sit on our arse more, <laughs> okay, just in terms of the type of jobs we do, okay? And because of both of those things, we tend to exercise less because we're busier, and so we lose muscle mass. Those are all three things. Metabolically, the most active part of your body are the muscles. So when you're younger and you're doing things and you have more time to go to the gym, first of all, your metabolic rate is linked to the amount of muscle you have. And so as you get older, you're sat on your arms, you eat a bit more. We don't eat less, we eat more. And we can buy richer food because we got more money. And you begin to lose muscle mass. So all of those things put together means that you inexorably become larger. Then what happens at 60 years old, your metabolism then starts to drop as well. And then you get even larger, middle-aged spread, etc. So on that point about the more muscles you have, the higher your, your metabolism. That's it. That means if, I'm, if I've got big muscles, then I'm burning my food faster. Yes. Fantastic news. I'm going to work out later. <laughs> lift some weights. Because um, I was really startled, startled by that. I, I, after I read it in your book about us gaining more and more weight as we age, I Googled it. And the Healthcare Research and Quality Agency said that we naturally tend to gain weight as we age to the tune of one to two pounds per year, according to their review. And that's from the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, which I found quite startling. Yeah, but, but completely accurate. So the numbers, so the, what, what the numbers that we have is, yeah, I think that's right, actually. So between 20 and 50 years old, those 30 years intervening, the average person, average, will gain about 15 kilos in weight, which is 32 point, yes, two pounds a year, one to two pounds a year. 15 kilos in weight is gained over 30 years on average. Some gain very little, others gain a hell of a lot more. We look at ourselves in a mirror. I look at myself in the mirror, um, but it's true. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> Mate, I don't know how much choice you have. <laughs> what can I do 
to 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 try and stay because for me it's not really about the weight thing or how you look it's more about like i i am um, i don't know how to say this but there was this big set of stairs the other day really really long set of stairs leading down to this lake i was in indonesia a couple of months ago um and i i remember thinking about those stairs and thinking god if i wasn't you know athletic and strong and didn't have good knees and things like that there's no way I'd be able to get down this long winding hand carved set of Indonesian stairs so that I could go on this boat trip that I was going to go on and I just thought about how it was a weird thing I know this is kind of a strange story to tell but it crossed my mind I got to the bottom of the stairs and I turned to the person I was with and was literally like you know that's why I've got to stay in shape for as long as I can because I want to do these boat trips and I want to go on this little rafting thing but I won't even be able to access it unless I can go down up and down those stairs like 200 meters of stairs down this cliff um so that's what I care about I care about being active and strong and fit for as long as I possibly can and I from what you've said about gravity and weight um being overweight is going to inhibit my chances of being able to do those stairs. So, so that I think there are two elements there. First of all, there is doing the things that we want to do. Okay. Like that, because it, it, you're exactly right. These are the things which I can still do that. I can still walk up a mountain or down a mountain because I'm still fit enough to do that. And I want to stay as fit as long as I can to do that. And weight will inhibit that undoubtedly. But then there's a second element to actually consider. Now there's healthy. Look, none of us are going to live longer. We hopefully... And anyway, if we left, lived longer but was unhealthy, would you want to live longer? So you want to live longer but healthier for longer, okay? And undoubtedly, the thing that is closest related to health when you age is not your total weight. There's a role to play there. The amount of muscle you have. It is your muscle mass as you age, independent of how much fat you have, okay? that will determine how healthy you are as you age. So as so now the moment now I'm talking about going into the 60s and the 70s rather than when one is able to go down a 200 meter set of steps, okay? So now as you get older, the most crucial bit of information is to maintain resistance training, not lifting and that's not what I'm talking about. Sitting on a wall, getting up and down a chair because that the amount of muscle mass you have really, really, really marks the level of health that, that you're going to get. And then the, the science is startling. It is so, so, so related, um, independent of independent of weight, you know, from, 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 from there. So muscle mass is the most important for healthy aging the moment you get 60, 70 plus. Interesting. Okay, so I'll keep, I'll keep doing resistance training. Correct. Always keep resistance training. And lifting weights as long as I can. Lifting weights as long as you can. At some point, you won't be able to lift weights well, just I don't because. Know. <laughs> don't, don't, don't write me off. Don't write me off, Charles. The hubris of youth. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the naivety of youth. Yeah, you just assume you'll always be able to do what you can do now. I, I, yeah, it's something I think a lot about, and I think a lot of people will watch this podcast because probably, especially this time of year, we're in January. They'll probably be trying to find ways that they can cut fat. They want to be a bit skinnier. You said, you, you, I think you said half a stone you want to lose. I'm in the same place. We, I think most people want to lose a, a half a stone or something. What is the way that you would suggest to do that? The simple way, you know, not the like fucking like complicated, go buy this guy's mm -hmm. course and do mm -hmm. three million sit-ups, whatever. The simple advice you would give someone that's homie, hoping to create sort of sustainable weight loss. Okay. So this, this something's like the last page of, of the Why Calories Don't Count book, but it is a set of numbers. And I know I said not to count calories, but it's a set of numbers that is that you can apply to whatever diet you like. So the first is the amount of protein you eat. And you need to try and focus on trying to keep to about 16% of the energy in your day, okay, from protein, 16%. And there's a sweet spot. So if you eat too much and you're not lifting, you're stressing your kidneys because your kidneys have to get rid of the nitrogen from the protein, okay? So 16% is a sweet spot. And it doesn't mean steaks only. It can mean beans, tofu, any kind of protein from, from anywhere, 16%. Second is fiber. We need to eat as much fiber as physically possible, okay? 30 grams we want to aim for. Although we're looking at the moment on average in this country, we're probably only eating 15 grams. We need to double the amount of fiber we actually eat. Third, we need to limit the amount of added sugars into our diet. Added sugars meaning sugars not tied up in fiber. Powdered stuff, uh, uh, um, uh, maple syrup, algarve, nectar, all those are added sugars you put in. Keep it to 5% or less of the, of the energy content in your day. 
And those are the three numbers that, that, that I want you to think about. So 16% of protein, 30 grams of fiber, 5% or less of added sugars. Apply that to whatever you want, what keto, um, whatever you want to do. Uh, 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 apply that. And I think that will be a sustainable, healthy way to eat. If you love the Diver CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor. Become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously. And the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests.